I like your pin. Well, thanks, man. Yeah, I was thinking of going all out, but no. <laughs> That's the best one to wear today. Yeah, right? <laughs> um, they, I've, I've people, when I don't have a beard, they call me the Black Leonard anymore. Really? Yeah, we, actually, if you hold our pictures side by side, there's, there's a resemblance. Awesome. It's actually weird. That's cool, <laughs> yeah. Fun fact. Fun fact. Excellent. Yeah. So how was it that you got involved in the first place? Um, audition. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, my, my manager uh, and agent, they, they know I really love these um, uh, shows about heightened abilities and, and comic book characters. So they got me the audition. I did it. And it worked out. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's as simple as that. What was it that you wanted to, to bring to this character? Was it described to you exactly as you ended up playing it? Were you able to bring anything of yourself to it? Um, you know what? Yes, I got to bring plenty of, plenty of myself to it. Um, I just wanted to be honest. I wanted to tell the story in a way that um, get get in this guy's skin, obviously, uh, you know, um, and, and just be honest to that story and tell it. Um, and yeah. Whatever comes of it, comes of it, you know what I mean? But understand what the stakes are and play it. Mm -hmm. What did you, I mean, were you a fan of the first season? What did, yes. What did you respond to most? What did you find most valuable about this show? Um, I think overall that's been done, you know, it was super valuable. A bulletproof black man in a hoodie in America. You know what I mean? Like, what a political statement that is in and of itself. I mean, and then you get into the art of it. Um, I think that <clears throat> Cheo put a lot of thought into using hip hop and cultural references to really build a world th that was uh, multi-dimensional, um, and you know that that was that was greatly appreciated. Mm -hmm. um, the cast, you know, all of it. Yeah, I mean, with with Bushmaster, we're able to explore a different culture and exactly. you know, a different right. musical culture right. as well. Yeah, we branch out the boroughs. We go from Harlem and we add some Brooklyn. So yeah, and it's that whole talk about the the, the diaspora and. How, how far it spans. It's not just, you know, it's not just Jamaican, it's not just African, it's not just, you know, African-American. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of experiences in the black um, diaspora. What did you want this character not to be? Was there anything you were trying to steer away from? Oh in, in God, I did not want him to be some, like, caricature. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you, you know, you could just really go corny with it and not from the belly. You know what I mean? Speaking up here... Um, Rost, you know what I'm saying? That that mm -hmm. like the stigma is like him smoking weed all the time or something like that. Um, yeah, I, di I didn't want any of that. You know, yeah. um, stereotypical Jamaican things. I mean, there was even a moment where I wanted to, I actually wanted to have a tracksuit on because I was like, why don't I fight in a tracksuit? You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. compared to what the the wardrobe they had, and he was like, nah, it's too on the nose. And I was like, you're right. You know, mm -hmm. you just want to sort of like not play into the stereotypes because it's so easy. Even if you, when you say Jamaican, some people immediately think, hey, man, you know, yeah. like, <laughs> um, and so, yeah, that's really easy. It's, it's, it's a culture that's really easy to project on. How did you dig into the culture yourself? What kind of research did you do? Um, I watched every bit of movie that I could ever watch. Um, I listened to Naya Bingy music, too. I wanted to throw up. But that didn't happen because I just love Nine Beaky music. It actually moves me. I'm very soulful. Um, yeah, I just inundated myself with all kinds of like cultural aspects, from music to food and all of that, you know. Um, and, you know, growing up in New York, I've had a lot of experience with the Caribbean, so it wasn't that far removed from me. It was, mm -hmm. it was more me just triggering my subconscious to uh, spring, you know, for what I know. W which movie do you think was the most useful in digging into that culture? Um, the harder they come, yeah. Like I, I was, I was thinking of saying it. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, right? It's just right there, like a million times in my sleep. Yeah, yeah. It's so good. It's really good. Do you have a favorite musical moment from this season? Yeah, uh, Gary Clark Jr. He his performance is just so. I mean, is a lot of them. Stephen Marley brings it too. I mean, I rock him and KRS, but um, I got to see like, Gary Clark, and it was just that that the way he's playing that guitar, man, or playing his instrument is just. Yeah, he's in it. He's really, he zoned every take. Like, he's a real artist. What do you hope that people take away from this season most? I mean, what, what, what do you feel is the message here that this season is progressing in the message that it's putting forth? I think that none of us, none of us are, none of us is, are as black and white as we, we are led to believe. Like, we're, you know, a hero does things that are questionable. Villains have feelings. You know what I mean? Like, we're, we're, we're way, way more multidimensional than, than we have been portrayed in the past. And so I feel like we should, gray is better than black or white. 
Mm-hmm. Excellent. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, man. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I love the deuce too. So good. Thanks, man. Thanks. It's amazing. Well, we're shooting.